Hello, friends. You're welcome to Crep Station Biology, and we'll be looking at some tips that would ensure that we get good and very high grades in jam. Uh, we'll be looking at almost all the topics, but I'm going to start with those unpopular topics. Okay, so the first topic that we'll be looking at today is the cell and its environment. Now, I believe that by now, if you are prepping for jam, you shouldn't be new to what a cell is. Okay, uh, a cell is defined as the basic structural and functional unit of a living organism. All living organisms are composed of cells, be it a single cell organism, a multicellular organism, complex organism, or whatever is it. But the point remains that so far it is an organism, it must definitely have a cell inside it. Okay, now, what are the cell theories? The first one states that all living things are made up of cells. All living things are made up of cells. Either it is a single cell organism, which we know as unicellular organism or multicellular organism. Now, single cell organism are uh, organisms that have just a single cell in them. And for example, we have bacteria. It's a single cell organism. Then we talk about multiple cell organisms or multicellular organisms. Human being is an example, uh, dog is an example, lion is an example, even plant, all of that, all, all of those organisms are referred to as multiple celled organisms. Now, the next slide to state that the cell is the structural and functional unit of all organisms. Is the structural and functional unit of all living organisms, meaning that Every living organism function based on the type of cell that is inside it. Every living organism is functioning based on the type of cell that make up the structure that it has. Now, so uh, we have different types of cell in organism. We have the we have blood cell, we have the nerve cell, we have the sperm cell, we have the rooted cells in plants. We have different type of cell, but all of them have different function that they perform. For example, we have the stem cell now. The stem cells do not really have a special cell, they are not specialized cells, but they can later become specialized. Now, then the next cell theory state that new cell arise from pre-existing cell. Just like we have a parent giving birth to children, we have an organism producing offspring, so cells will definitely give rise to another cell which means that if there were no cells now, there wouldn't have been new cells that we have now. Okay, so let's move on. Now, the next point we're going to look at now is the cell organelles. Cell organelles. Now, the cell organelles are the tiny organs that make up the cellular activities, I mean, that enables the cellular activities to occur. The cell organelles, now please, stay with me. Most people confuse organs and organelles. Now let's try to break, it, break them down. Organelles are not as big as organs. They are tiny, they are small, they are minute. It is when you have plenty of organelles coming together, performing similar functions, that you can say that you have an organ. Okay, now let's look at it. I said there are the tiny organs that enable the cellular activities to occur. Now these tiny organs include cell wall. Every cell must have cell wall. Now, we also have mitochondria. Mitochondria, what does it do? It is often called the powerhouse of the cell. Why? Because it is in the mitochondria that cellular respiration takes place. And that's why it is called the powerhouse, because it is when a cell respires that energy is generated. It is when a cell respires that uh, 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 energy, ATP, is being produced that the cell will now use to drive all its other metabolic activities. We have ribosomes that function in the protein synthesis. We have cell membrane. We have nucleus. We have nucleus. Now, please tell with me. Uh, this nucleus here now, what is the function of nucleus? Almost, or not even almost, all the cells must have nucleus. All the cells must have nucleus. Now, I believe you would agree with me uh, that in your early days in biology, you must have been taught what we know as prokaryote and eukaryote, right? Now, the point is this. A major difference between these two is the, the, uh, the presence of nucleus. Now, this guy 
He said not to have a true nucleus. Not because he doesn't have nucleus, but he does not have true nucleus. I'm going to explain why. Now, he doesn't have true nucleus because the nucleus that is inside a prokaryotic cell is not bounded by a membrane. Now, in this case of eukaryotes, now all of us are in this category. All of us, all our cousins now, we are all in this category. We are all eukaryotic in nature because we possess true nucleus. But this guy lacks true nucleus. But it doesn't mean that he doesn't have nucleus. Let me give an example. If I'm going to school and I don't have my bag with me, yet it is possible that I can go to school without bag, but I always go with my books. So if there's no bag to carry the book, I can put the book like this. I can still use my hand to carry my books. So it doesn't mean that I don't have book, but I just don't have bag to keep them. So this nucleus houses the genetic material that the cell uses to be produced. What are those genetic material? DNA. I'm sure you're with me. DNA. Now, they are found inside this nucleus. So if the nucleus of a prokaryotic organism does not have a membrane-bound nucleus, it means that the DNA is still there. It's just that the DNA is streaming freely in the cytoplasm. Uh, let me see if I can quickly show you something. Can you have a look at this? This cell that you have here now, this is a bacterium, and it is an example of a prokaryotic organism. It's an example of a prokaryotic organism. Now look at this guy here, this uh, uh, coiled stuff here, those are the genetic material found inside the bacterium. I'm sure you can see it. Now, normally, the genetic material that you see here, they are supposed to be enclosed inside the nucleus. Now, it is supposed to be enclosed inside the nucleus. So when you have the nucleus like this, then you are supposed to have the genetic material inside it. But in the case of this guy, the genetic material is there, but there's, no, there's nothing enclosing it. It doesn't have a boundary. There's no bag covering it. I hope you are still with me. Okay, so let's go back. We were looking at the organelles. Okay. Uh, okay, now, the next one is endoplasmic reticulum, then followed by lysosome. We have vacuum, we have plastids, we have centrioles, we have chloroplast. Okay, now, I believe that is clear. The organelles that you have in the cell are definitely more than what we have here. We have so much more that I can't list here. But by now, if you are preparing for jam, it shouldn't be a new thing to you when you talk about the organelles cell. So let's move to the forms of cell, like different forms of cell. Now, we have the prokaryotic cells and we have the eukaryotic cells. Uh, let, me, let me quickly do an illustration here. I believe you guys are with me. Now, uh, prokaryotic cell, or simply put prokaryotes, and we have the eukaryotes. Now, there's no big word in biology that is completely big. Every big word can be uh, broken down into pieces. Every big word in biology can be broken down into pieces. So when you hear prokaryotes here, don't be disturbed that, oh, this word is just too big. I don't know the name. Now, let's look at it. The word pro here and the word ew, the word caveat and caveat. This guy is present in the two words. Now, this caveat means nucleus. I, I'm are you with me, please. This caveat means nucleus. Then this pro means before, meaning that you can say you can it can be said that prokaryotic organisms exist before nucleus. Prokaryotic organisms exist before nucleus, meaning that it can also be said that they lack what. Nucleus. They lack nucleus. But this guy now, new, are nucleus. Eukaryotic organisms have nucleus. Prokaryotic organisms does not have nucleus. But please don't be confused. That they do not have nucleus doesn't mean that they don't have the content of the nucleus. The genetic materials are there. But what happens is that the genetic material in these prokaryotic organisms are swimming freely in the cytoplasm. There's no bag over them. There's no enclosure for them. Okay, now let's look at the features of prokaryotic organisms. Most of them are single-celled organisms. Single-celled organisms. A single-celled organism is an organism that has just a single cell, meaning that it is not complex. 
Meaning that it is what? Simple. Because it has a single cell. Now, if you look at a human being, you look at a dog, you look, you look like, you look at, uh, let's say, other animals in the zoo. Then they have different systems, digestive systems, circulatory system, excretory system. Why do they have all of those systems? Because of the complexity. Because of the plenty of cells that is in there. But in the case of this guy now, it's only one cell. Though it doesn't have all of those systems. And let's move on. There is no membrane bound organelles. No membrane bound. In this guy here, the, in the prokaryotic organism, the organelles that they have do not have a membrane. Now look at this. Look at this guy. This is uh, a eukaryotic cell. It's a eukaryotic cell. If you look at this place now, you will be able to see that all the organelles have an enclosure. All of them have their own boundaries. There's something that is demarcating the boundary of a mitochondria from the boundary of a Golgi body, from that of lysosome, from that of a ribosome. In the case of prokaryotic organisms, there is nothing like that. There's no marked boundaries in prokaryotic organisms. But in eukaryotic organisms, there's something like that. Okay, now let's go back. DNA floats freely in the cytoplasm. Look at it. DNA floats freely in the cytoplasm. Then there are more primitive type of cells. Now, what do I mean by more primitive? When I was explaining prokaryotic to you, I told you that pro means before. So primitive means that they are ancient. These prokaryotic cells are ancient cells. They are old. They are old. They are, they are not really experienced civilization. Okay, now, let's move on. Then, they are typically very, very small. Very, very small. Imagine when you see a uh, bacterium now, it's always very, very small. So small. And that's the reason why most, uh, all prokaryotic cells are microscopic in nature. They are small. At least you can see me. That means I'm not prokaryotic. Yeah, you, you can see me, I can see some other students around me too. We are all eukaryotic. But we also have some organisms that are prokaryotic that we cannot see. We cannot see. Please don't get me wrong. There are also some microscopic organisms that are not single cells. Let, let's keep that. So let's move on to eukaryotic cells. They contain an enclosed nucleus containing the genetic materials of the cell. So their whole nucleus can be like this. If you have a cell like this now, the nucleus will definitely be there. Unlike in the case of prokaryote, where the genetic material is just like this. Okay, then they contain membrane-bound organelles. For example, mitochondria. Now look at this. Where is mitochondria in this cell here? Look at it here. This is it. This is the mitochondria. This is mitochondria among some other organelles that we have in this cell. The plant and animal cells are eukaryotic. Plant and animal cells are eukaryotic. They are mainly multicellular. The reason why these guys have uh, boundaries, the reason why they are complex is because they have plenty of cells in them. That's the reason why they are multicellular. They, they are typically larger than the prokaryotic cells. They are bigger than the prokaryotic cells. They are not small, they are big, at least we can see them. Then let's move on. The cell and its environment. I want you to pay attention to one thing. That the way you behave, the way you react also depends on where you are. If you are in a class that is extremely cold, you start complaining. Either you go and get your, 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 your Uji or you go and get your cardigan to wear because of the environment. So we react based on the environment we find ourselves. The same thing happens to cells too. A cell too react differently based on the environment in which it is found. Okay, now let's move on. Now, this is the activities of cell in relation to its environment. Cells have different activities based on the environment in which it is placed. There are three different solutions in which a cell can be placed. Now, stay with me. The first solution is hypotonic solution. Now, I want you to understand one thing that everything we do in biology can be applied to what is going on in our lives too. Everything that we do in biology is applicable to what is going on in our lives. Okay, so we have what we call the hypotonic solution. I hope you're still there with me. We have the hypertonic solution. And we also have the iso 
hypotonic solution. Hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic solution. Okay, now before we move on, let me quickly explain the meaning of these different solutions to you. A cell can be placed in a hypotonic solution. Now, what does it mean? Now, let's try to break it down. Hypo means it is below. It means it is not enough. It means it is not up to the level it's supposed to be. So, when you have a cell, when you have a cell, if a cell is placed in an hypotonic solution, the meaning is that the concentration of the cell, please stay with me, the concentration of the cell and that of the environment is not the same thing. Please, I'm going somewhere. It's not the same thing. And it also means that the concentration inside that of the cell is more than that of the environment. And that is why it is called hypotonic, meaning that the environment of the cell is not having enough concentration as that of the cell. Are you still with me? The environment of this cell, in case of hypotonic, is not having enough concentration as that of the cell. So let's go back to uh, the, the, let's go back to what we did in, in SS1. Okay, we talked about osmosis, right? Okay, now, what is osmosis? The movement of water molecules, right? Water molecules uh, from from a region of what? From a region of lower concentration of solute to a region of higher concentration. Please stay with me. I'm going somewhere before uh, we go for a short break. Let me quickly explain this. Okay. Now, so in this case now, since the cell is placed in an hypotonic solution, normally there's supposed to be a balance. So it is expected that that cell will try to balance up the solution, balance up with the environment in which it is placed by giving more water from itself. So that cell is expected to do what? It's expected to lose water. I mean, it's expected to to gain water rather, please. Because it is movement of water from a region of low. And I already said that the cell is placed in a hypotonic solution that does not have enough. It doesn't have enough. So the molecule will move from the region of low to a region of high. So that, that cell that is placed in this solution will definitely gain more water. So it's going to become what? Swollen. The cell becomes swollen. The cell becomes swollen. So we'll continue from here after this short break. Thank you so much. <laughs>